originally come from God. It's just uh, on the receiving end, sometimes we don't have the receptivity as we should. But I believe I still gotta hope y'all ask y'all y'all all right? Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, just along with it. just track with me as they say. Just track with me a little bit. We we need to get to the point where uh, we're not gonna continue on in our folly. We gotta come out of agreement with some things, and we gotta make up our mind that we're gonna be fully persuaded by the things that we've seen and heard. Therefore, as we make up our mind that we're going to be fully persuaded by the things that we heard, there's a conviction that comes in our hearts. And we find ourselves, there will be a level of consistency that will happen to your life. And, then, and as a result of that conviction and consistency, there will be a reflection from your life. Right? Okay. I can't look back here no more. I, I want to turn around, but I can't because God told me not to. You get what I'm saying? There has to be. A manifestation of some sort. Now, there is a manifestation of a sort. It's sometimes if we don't yield to the promptings and the unction of the Holy Spirit, we have a manifestation of religion and not the manifestation of kingdom. We have a manifestation of church and not a manifestation of kingdom. We need a manifestation that is accurate. Tell you that we need an accurate manifestation. Yeah, we, do, we need an accurate manifestation. We do. We need, a, we need a fresh zenith. That means there needs to be a manifestation, a magnification of the principles and purposes of God. Right? right. We need a zenith moment. Anybody need a zenith? Remember the, the old TV back in the day? We need a zenith moment. Hey, you got a zenith in your house? Boy, let me tell you something. People come in your house and say, that's a zenith. <laughs> they knew. Somebody has some scratch. And we, we they, I don't know, I doubt they sell them now, but we need a zenith moment. And even in science, they have zenith moments where all of a sudden they're able to see further than they ever saw before. Yeah. We need a zenith moment where we can begin to look into the, hey amen, yeah. with a tunnel vision. And allow the, the scriptures to stop being a microscope. Dissecting us, but we need it to become a telescope. Yeah. That's what we need. We need men and women to stand in the pulpit instead of us always looking in the Petri dish. Then we can lift up our head to the hills for what comes our help as a collective body. Is that You should be able to come here. I don't want to take your hope from you. You should be able to come and sit underneath the word and then all of a sudden a lively hope comes yes. in. You should get out of here and say, you know what? Give me my mount. That's what you should have. That's what should happen after you sit under the word. If you hear it right, you tune in right with beyond the distractions. From spirit to spirit, you should be able to leave here with a hope that can't be defiled. Because this is the day we're in. This is the time that the Father has assigned for us. Amen? And we got to get there. We can't keep forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We can't just hear it to, for sake of hearing. We got to be intentional. We got to be deliberate. We got to be determined. You get what I'm saying? We need that Caleb spirit. You know, Caleb, they call Caleb a bulldog. His name means bulldog. Caleb was the only one that got the message right. <coughs> Joshua didn't get the, excuse me, who was just turn it off? <laughs> Caleb said something. He said, when they, in Numbers 14, when everybody, the 10 was complaining and said, them giants over there, because, you know, let me just tell you something. There's always giants in the promise. The promise land always have giants. You just got to decide if you're going to stay here or move, go there. But anyhow, but he said about the giants, it's bread for us. When the last time you looked at a giant and said, it's bread for me? <laughs> no, nah, we do like they do. Or should I say, do like they did? We start complaining. Right? As soon as we see something, something going on that's not necessarily scripted the way we thought should be scripted. Right? Our mouth going in reverse. <laughs> we got a laundry list of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Instead, we just got to keep our mouth closed and say, okay, this is bread for us. And, and even in this season for this church, I'm careful with my words. Very careful. So I know, you know, that uh, some people have gone and left and moved on and whatever they're doing, I don't know. I ain't even looking for them. Seriously. I like a lot of I mean, a few of them. I do. Some of my, my heart, they, when they left, my heart left with them. But that's not really up for me to try to figure out. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure I make this moment, maximize this moment. And see, if I allow it to fester, then I won't be effective for you. So, you know, because sometimes, I told you guys, sometimes your distraction becomes your main attraction. I refuse to let my distraction become my main attraction. Some I reach out to, I inbox, I, am, I, have, I implore, and things of that sort. But even that is on a, <laughs> that's on a meter too. <laughs> you only do so much. You know, the Holy Ghost is the keeper. I'm not a keeper. Amen. You get what I'm saying? So we need to get to the point where we're effective long term. So that we can bring the manifestation that God has for us. But we have some things, we have this yoke upon us that we can't get beyond. And that's why I can, I can sympathize and empathize with Paul where he said, he told him in Galatians 4.19, he said, I long, no, no, that was Romans 1.11, he said, I long to impart to you. Remember that? Mm -hmm. What? What do you want to impart to him? Yes, yes. Gift. He said, I long to impart to him a gift so they can be what? Established. That's what he told the church in Rome. Then he told the church in Galatia. He told them in Galatians 4.19. Let's go there. Galatians 4.19, he told them something. This, that's a part of this. This is the mantra of real boys, international women. It's the mantra of every apostolic voice in the earth. My little children of whom I travail. Remember over in Isaiah 26, 17, you've been in pain, you've been in travail or pains, right? Because the pain or the travail that we're feeling is because the Christ we carry is longing for manifestation, right? So it said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until what? Christ be formed. Where? In you. In other words, he said, again, which means you missed the moment. Uh, so we got to do a, 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 a summary again. We got to do repeat. So we got to go back over the notes. So we got to pick up the fragments. And so that's what I, I got to do from time to time. Again and again and again and again, I have to implore us and beseech the house and say, this is what's necessary for us in this season. <coughs> I said, I'm going to do that. Excuse me. But to rail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. See, because that's, that's where we got to get to. And I got to show you how Christ is formed. And I'm going to show you some of the principles we've shared before and some new principles on how for us to transition towards the thing that God has given to us. I like it. Passion says, you are my dear children, but I agonize in spiritual labor pains once again until the anointed one will be fully formed in your hearts. So I, that's what I want. See, it's one thing to be in Christ, but it's another thing for Christ to be in you. Because the you in Christ is salvation. Christ in you. Christ formed in you. That's why he said, remember he told him in John 15, I in you, you in me? That's the same concept. One is salvation. The other is sanctification. Christ formed in you. That's what we want to get to. But we can't get there. Like I said, we're forever learning and never able to come to what? To the knowledge of the truth. And the reason why most churches are forever learning is the issue of information. The reason why there's a, a uh, we're not actually experiencing the impartation of the grace of sonship so that we can be formed. Although scripture says that we are uh, born under, go to Galatians 4. Uh, and I got to give this to you. I, I was going to skip it, but let me give it to you. Galatians 4 and 1. See, we, the, the objective of New Testament ministry is for the Christ to be formed in you. 
Because we already went to Isaiah and found out the whole objective, the reason why all of us have been brought out of darkness, that we're the earnest of what God wants to do in the earth realm anyway, but as a result of our submission to what God is saying and declaring, as we uh, uh, put honor on what's being said, all of a sudden, there's a manifestation of sorts that should have a, a, a ripple effect on the things that's connected to us, our own sphere. All of, how many know all of us have a sphere? Fear. A sphere. A sphere. The S-P-H-E-R-E. A realm. A domain. Same word. All of us. How many know that? All of us have a domain. A dwelling. And within that domain, in that realm, we come in contact with different people. Yeah. And there has to be something that, that some type of fruit, which is another word for manifestation, has to be something tangible that extends or exudes from our life that others can see and take note because this is what it's all about. And the inability to do such has been because of, of a few factors, but most of the church has been unable to do certain things because we have the wrong information. Our eschatology's off. Am I right? We got the pastoral paradigm where everybody wanted to just have a great man of power for the hour. Like I heard you somebody used to say, God's man of power for the hour. <laughs> and we like to have it so, just like they did in Ezekiel's day. You know, they said they love to have prophets and priests and kings. And God was calling them to be that. It wasn't anything new. It had to happen.